Yes. Is it on? Yes. Okay. Yeah, on this side? Oh, that's why you can't see it. That could be. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to call the September 6, 2022 Crest Hill City Council to meet, meeting to order at 7 p.m. If everyone would please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag and please remain standing after the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty, liberty and justice for all. Unfortunately, the city of Crest Hill and our 62-year history uh, lost two of our Crest Hill police officers who were killed in the line of duty. Officer James Nink was killed while he was chasing a, an armed robbery subject and was involved in a vehicular accident which claimed his life on September 16, 1967. Sergeant Tim Simonson, again, was investigating an armed robbery subject when an indiv individual popped out of the trunk of the vehicle and shot Sergeant Simonson. That was on September 28, 1994. We certainly want to offer our condolences to both the Nink and the Simonson family for their loss. We certainly want to thank them for the service that their husbands gave the city of Crest Hill. We certainly want to pray also for all of our Crest Hill police officers, men and women, and all the police officers throughout the entire nation during this most difficult times of social unrest, to keep them safe, that they can return home safely to their families every night. We also want to keep in our prayers all of the first responders, the fire department, the health care workers, and everyone that helps assist during tragedies and situations. So with all that being said, I would certainly like to offer a moment of silence and silent prayer, offering our condolences to both the Simonson and Nink families. Thank you. Roll call, please, Chris. Gray Solomon. Here. Glenn Conklin. Present. Scott Dyke. Here. John Roche. Here. Darrell Jefferson. Here. Claudia Gazal. Here. Tina Oberlin. Present. Mark Sapiti. Here. Nate Albert. Here. And Joe Kuwa. Here. Thank you. Okay, a couple orders, a couple order of business this, uh, tonight before we go into the agenda items. First is the approval of the minutes of the regular city council meeting held on August 15th, 2022. Motion would be in order. So move. Second. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Brashe, seconded by Alderman Gazal. Questions or comments of the motion for the approval of the minutes of the August 15th, 2022 Crestville City Council meeting. Roll call, please. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Brashe? Yes. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Dean Oberlin? Yes. Mark Sapiti? Yes. Nate Albert? Yes. And Joe Kubo? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, you also have before you the approval of the minutes of the work session held on August 22nd, 2022. Motion would be in order. So move. Second. We have motion by Alderman Jefferson, seconded by Alderman Verche for approval of the minutes of the August 22nd, 2022. Crest Hill work session. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Mark Sapiti? Yes. Nate Albert? Yes. Joe Kubal? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Roche? Yes. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. And finally, you have before you the approval of the minutes for the special city council meeting held last week on August 29th, 2022. So moved. Second. Motion by Alderman Gazal, seconded by Alderman Dyke for the approval of the minutes of the August 29th, 2022 special works, uh, special city council meeting. Questions or comments? There is one uh, typo on there on page 26. Uh, six lines from the bottom list, public relations manager, which should be employee relations manager. Okay, to the motioner? Yes. To the second? Yes. Okay. 
Jefferson. And roll call, please. John Roche? Yes. Terrell Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Mark Sapiti? Yes. Nate Albert? Yes. Joe Kubal? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. Motion carries, thank you. Okay, we have some special guests in the audience this evening. I would ask if we could deviate to the mayor's report, the first two agenda items under the mayor's report, um, as a courtesy to our guests that are in the audience this evening. The first one is uh, our friends from the Daughters of the American Revolution, uh, Pauline Herpy and Lynn Freebus are here with us this evening. First, we're going to have the uh, reading of the proclamation. And since it's a shorter proclamation, uh, I'm going to ask that wards one and two tonight uh, take care of the reading of the proclamation. We'll begin with Alderman Dyke. Thank you, Mayor. Proclamation, whereas the Constitution of the United States of America, the guardian of our liberties, embodies the principles of limited government and a republic dedicated to the rule by law and, whereas it is the privilege and duty of the American people to commemorate the 235th anniversary of the drafting of the Constitution of the United States of America with appropriate ceremonies and activities and <clears throat> whereas it is fitting and proper to accord official recognition to this magnif magnificent document and its mem mem memorable, uh, mem memorable anniversary and to, th to the patriotic celebration which will commemorate it and and whereas Public <coughs> Law 915 guaranteed the issuing of a proclamation each year by the President of the United States of America designating September 17 through 23 as Constitutional Week, Constitution Week, now therefore I, Raymond R. Solomon, by virtue of the authority vested in me as the mayor of the city of Crest Hill, do hereby proclaim the week of September 17th through 23rd, 2022, as Constitution Week. And urge all our citizens to study the Constitution and reflect on the privilege of being an American with all the rights and responsibilities which the privilege involves. And witness whereof I hereunto set my hand and cause the corporate seal of the city of Crest Hill the sixth day of September, 2022, Raymond R. Solomon, Mayor. So moved. Second. We have a motion by all the person over and seconded by Alderman Sapiti for the approval of the proclamation for Constitution Week. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Mark Sapiti? Yes. Nate Albert? Yes. Joe Kubal? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Roche? Yes. Motion carries, thank you. Certainly want to uh, thank both Pauline and Lynn for being here this evening. I know that they are at several other municipal um, um, meetings this evening. Um, they've been doing this with us now for, I think, over 10 years. Yes, yes. And um, we're certainly proud to have you involved with the city of Crest Hill. It's been a great relationship and uh, we are, you are always welcome here. We want to thank you for all the hard work that you do for the uh, remembrance of the proclamation. It's a very important document and for all that you do for the surrounding communities also. So with that, I would certainly like to present a copy of this proclamation on, my, on behalf of myself, the city council and all the residents of the city of Crest Hill um, to your organization for you to display and thank you for your patriotism that you show us each and every day. Thank you so thank much, you Mayor. Much. Appreciate and it. You can certainly thank you. say whatever you'd like. Okay. To Mayor Raymond Solomon and members of the board of the city of Crest Hill, thank you for allowing us to come here tonight to receive the proclamation to promote the Constitution to, uh, week from September 17th to the 23rd in your city of Crest Hill. I'm Pauline Herpy, Constitution Week Chairman. This is Lynn Friedman, Constitution State Chairman. Uh, and we are here for the purpose and mission of the Daughters of the American Revolution. The purpose and mission of the Daughters of the American Revolution is to perpetuate the memory and spirit of the men and women who achieved independence in 1776. To that end, we promote the education of the Constitution in our schools, libraries, and city halls. And I'd like to show you a kit that we give out to children in seventh and eighth grade 
who are studying the Constitution, as many of you probably did here in Illinois, in eighth grade you studied the Constitution. So to promote that, to reinforce it out in the classroom, we give each student in the class a little Constitution book, a flag, the preamble to the United States, We give them a patriotic pen, a word search, patriotic word search, and a bell. So they can use all of these as part of their lessons to reinforce their lessons that the teacher is teaching them. Uh, and it's a fun thing. And by the way, these were all made by Lynn Freebus and one other member. So uh, our first meeting will be on September 10th, and we will assemble all these, uh, 50 of them. And uh, then we will take them to uh, a school classroom, two school classrooms, and give them out. The other thing that we do is we have a poster that we take to the junior high schools. And these posters are to promote the Constitution it talks about the uh, three uh, branches of the government, legislative, executive, and judicial. So these are the ways that we really get into the schools hands-on, which we're very proud of, and we hope that the, the, that it, the children remember it. As Abraham Lincoln said at the end of the Civil War, our safety, our liberty, depends on preserving the Constitution of the United States as our fathers made it inviolate. The people of the United States are the rightful master of both Congress and the court, not to overthrow the Constitution, but to overthrow men who pervert the Constitution. Thank you very much for having us this evening. I'd uh, like to open up the City Council for any comments you'd like to make. Well, ladies, once again, I'd like to thank you for your tireless efforts on, on promoting this with our students. I think the more we get involved with our children, the better off they're going to be. So um, hats off to you ladies. Thank you very Top much. Top hats. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations and thank you for everything you do. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. Okay, hey, thank you ladies. We'll see you next year. All right. <laughs> it's always the same dates, correct? It's always yes. the, uh, September 17th yes. to 23rd. That doesn't change. Right. Yes. Okay. Thank you again. All right. You guys have Bye -bye. a good night. Okay, we also uh, have a special uh, guest here this evening, Ms. Jordan Kolaski. Um, she is a uh, Crest Hill resident, lives in Ward 2. I believe your two brothers are here too that are, just one? Boyfriend, okay. Two, two, uh, two, Eagle, two other Eagle Scout awards, correct? Um, her older brother has Eagle, he's working on it. Okay, so it's a family affair. Mm -hmm. So Jordan, if you'd like to join me at, at the podium. For a minute. So just to give you a little information about Jordan, she is a member uh, um, with St. John's Lutheran Church in Joliet right on Route 30 in Hennepin uh, as they meet on Tuesday nights. And um, her mother Jennifer, who's here this evening also, is the scoutmaster for the troop. She is, uh, she and I believe four other girls, correct, are part of Boy Scout Troop 83 that meets at St. John's Lutheran Church also. And Jordan's project for her Eagle Scout uh, was the constructing, designing, and installing of a memorial bench for the fallen firefighters of the Plainfield Fire District. She raised $350 in fundraising to be able to afford the materials for the bench. And if you have not seen it, it's at the administrative office in one of the Plainfield Fire Departments uh, off of 135th Street, east of Route 59. And the Plainfield Fire Department does service the western border of the city of Crest Hill. If you have not seen it, I urge you to you take the time to take a drive out there because she actually made a ladder as the back of the bench, which really looks sharp. Um, 
Jordan is a 2022 graduate of Lockport Township High School. And she said that she wants to work with young children in the future. So with that, uh, I would like to read a letter that I drafted for her on the honor of her Eagle Scout Award. It says, Dear Jordan, I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate you on earning your Eagle Scout Award on July 12th, 2022. This designation is a strong testi testimony to your commitment, dedication, and loyalty to both the Boy Scouts and your community. I am impressed that during your scouting career, you have earned 21 merit badges and served in a variety of leadership roles, which included senior patrol leader for the girls troop 83. You also completed a community project by designing, constructing and installing a memorial bench for the fallen firefighters of the Plainfield Fire Department at the Plainfield Fire Training Facility. Earning the Eagle Scout designation proves that you are responsible dedicated and community minded. As you continue to build on this foundation, I am confident that you'll be very successful in any life path that you choose. Congratulations on your Eagle Scout Award and keep up the good work. I congratulate you on this. And we also, from the city of Crest Hill, have a certificate of recognition, which says this certificate is awarded to Jordan May Kolaski for her achievements in Boy Scouts and earning Eagle Scout honors for designing, constructing, and installing a memorial bench for the fallen firefighters of the Plainfield Fire Department at the Plainfield Fire Training Facility and for her dedication to the citizens of the city of Crest Hill. Dated in Crest Hill, Illinois, the sixth day of September, 2022. Congratulations to you. Congratulations to you. You can build a bench, you can make a little speech. <laughs> um, well, I want to say thank you and for recognizing my hard work on the bench. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. And, and this is a father of another Eagle Scout award about four or five years ago, correct? Yes. So, mom, dad, brother, boyfriend, anybody like to make any mm -hmm. comments? Jennifer? No. Okay. Podium is yours. No. City Council, any comments? I would love to say a comment. Um, Jordan. I'm a big fan of the Kolaski family because the time that they put into their kids, it's amazingly. It's obviously, it's part of what you've dedicated, all the effort, the work, and you keep pushing your kids to do the best, and they are. Jordan, you know how much I love you. Uh, I do miss you on the best stop. I, uh, I'm so proud of you. Just stop making me wait with all these chocolates. Um, but yeah, keep up the good, keep up the good work, and uh, you are an example of what a young lady should be like. So I hope uh, I can't wait to see what the future holds for you and for your entire family as well, your brothers. I do have a little flowers for you. So I would like to hand you this. Uh, Jordan, congratulations. Great job. I know the whole Kalaski family is very committed to the community. Uh, Jen and Jerry, thank you for all that you guys have done to raise great kids um, and all the work that you do for the Catholic churches in Crest Hill, too. St. Anne, St. Ambrose, you guys have done a lot of work. Thank you. Well, I want to I want to give you kudos. It's an admirable what you're doing, and not only um, kudos to you, but your parents. And, and your siblings, because I know that when things like this happen, it's a team effort, and everybody has to, you know, share the load. And when you're not home to do dishes, the brothers got to do them, and, right? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> great job. <laughs> yeah, that that's a male thing. So, a great job to all of you, and, and for setting such a wonderful example for other other young ladies your age. That's admirable. Thank you. Congratulations, Jordan. Um, all the hard work and dedication that you put into um, everything you've done for the Scouts, I want to I commend you and congratulate you and wish you the best of luck on anything you 
pursue. I'm sure you'll be successful at it. Thank you. Just want to congratulate you on what you've accomplished. Not many people ever get to that kind of a rank of an Eagle Scout. It's very rare to have someone accomplish that feat. It takes a lot of work and time leading up to that ladder that you built. So congratulations on your hard dedication to achieve that. And I know you'll be successful in whatever you do, because whatever you did now, it'll translate later for you, and you'll take that honor with you your whole life. That's something you can be proud of. Congratulations again. George, you just proved that there are some good young people around yet. So congratulations. Great job, Jordan. Congratulations to you and your family on your success. And your brother's success was not here, previously of the Eagle Scout. And continue the good work and making our community look good. Okay, Jordan, congratulations on all your achievements. You have a very bright future ahead of you, so congratulations. All right, moving on. To our, you, you're more than welcome to stay if you'd like. You certainly can leave also if you, if you have other things to do, which I'm sure you do. <laughs> okay. Um, Dishes. <laughs> I'm moving on to the uh, city attorney's report. Our city attorney, Mike Steff. Good evening, Mike. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, there's one agenda item uh, in your packet. Uh, there should be a short memo that basically explains that I amended the. Uh, purchasing policy in the one manner that uh, was discussed at the last work session. Uh, after the memo, there should be a clean version of what the uh, uh, purchasing policy will look like now. Then there's the resolution approving the uh, uh, amendment to the purchasing policy. And then the last item in the agenda, uh, I think the way they were uploaded, the red line was last as opposed to first. So the, the red line version is the last item uh, in that section, which shows the deletion of the old 3.5 and then the new 3.5 in red, uh, which I believe is along the lines of what was discussed. So aside from that, uh, I'll take any questions, but uh, uh, the resolution is uh, before you to amend the purchasing policy uh, as discussed at the last work session. So moved as presented. Second. We have a motion by all the person over and seconded by all the women. Does all questions or comments of the motion for a resolution amending the purchasing policy, purchasing policy for the city of Crestel? I do have one question. It's under in section three, um, the very first sentence. Uh, it, it references the cable department. It exactly is the cable department. Actually, that was one of the comments that I had when I first sat down, and I don't know that I ever got an answer to that. <laughs> we added that back in the day for emergency for the cable room. So community cable? Yeah, it's yeah. something that we're okay. discussing many. Okay. Yeah. CHCTV. Hey, roll call. Mark Cipede? Yes. Nate Albert? No. Joe Kowal? Abstain. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Roche? Yes. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Tina Overland? Yes. <coughs> Motion carries a resolution 1155. Anything else, Mike? No, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Any questions of city attorney? Okay, thanks, Mike. Uh, moving on to the city right administrator. Right. City administrator, Jim Marino. Good evening, Jim. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I don't have anything on the agenda tonight. I did provide you with my report on Friday. Just a brief update on one item with the um, Park District Intergovernmental Agreement. Um, I did receive some minor comments from the director of the Park District. So I'll be working with Mike Stiff to finalize that in our government agreement and bring it to you for uh, approval at a future meeting. Any questions of city administrator? Okay, thanks, Jim. Uh, moving on to Public Works Department, our Director of Public Works, Mark Seifert. Good evening, Mark. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I have two agenda items before you this evening. 
The first, um, with uh, City Engineer, we've been on vacation. Um, I am handling the crack filling tonight. Um, City Engineer Weedman went out and received two bids for crack, citywide crack filling. The low bid was Patriot Pavement Maintenance, maintenance with a low bid of $29,250. Um, this, uh, this was budgeted for $20,000. There will be no change in the overall MFT budget approved this year. Uh, he's just uh, making some changes in other places. So I'm looking for approval of a contract with Patriot Pavement Maintenance for the 2022-23 MFT citywide crack filling program in the amount of $29,250. Why were those bids so drastically different? Do you know? I, I do not know. I can find out. No, I was just curious because it's, you know. It's a pretty big difference. I yeah. Think. Yes. It's, it's, and it's already, you know, 10,000, 50% over what yeah. we budgeted, so. <clears throat> yeah, not, not sure where, I, I, we have worked with pay, Patriot in the past, I know. Uh, I'm not sure where SKC is probably. So moved is presented. Second. We have a motion by all the person over and seconded by Alderman Jefferson for the approval <coughs> of awarding the contract to Patriot Pavement Maintenance for the 2022-2023 MFT Citywide Craft Filling Program in the amount of $29,250. Questions or comments? Yeah, Mayor, I have a comment that kind of relates to the <coughs> uh, crack filling. All the concrete work that they did on Linwood actually ripped up all of the crack filling that was done last year or the year before. I don't know the heavy equipment or whatever, but it's, it's the, the actual crack filling. Yeah, uh, I, I, I can take a look at it tomorrow, and then when Ron gets back on Thursday, I can have him dive into it deeper. Appreciate that. Thanks. Roll call. Nate Elbert. Yes. Joe Kubal. Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Roche? Yes. Pharrell Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Tina Overland? Yes. And Mark Sapiti? Yes. Motion carries, thank you. The next agenda item I have before you is a two-parter. Um, as we talked about at the last work session, um, approving an easement agreement with Menard Incorporated for the property behind Menard uh, for Well 14. Uh, this was going to require two actions by the council. The first is an ordinance authorizing the plat of vacation of the current easement we have, and then a resolution, a resolution accepting approving the grant of the well site easement. Um, as we said, this will uh, is a total uh, cost of five thousand dollars that we have to grass around the potential pots. So, uh, with that, I would look for number one, um, a uh, approval of an ordinance authorizing the plan of vacation. So moved is presented. Second. We have a motion by Alder Person Overland, seconded by Alder Woman Gazal, for an ordinance authorizing a plan of vacation. For the east, for the uh, utility easement on vacant land east of the Menards uh, store. Questions or comments? Mark, would you once again explain how now um, no one else can use that but us? Yeah. So once, well, after the next resolution, not after this one. After the next one, um, we will be the only utilities who are allowed in there. There'll be an exclusive easement for just the city of Crest Hill. So it's, it's a fifty, it's a, uh, a fifty by one hundred area where we are the only people who will ever be able to have any sort of uh, yes. ability to put anything underground or above ground at that spot. And we already had contractually been cutting that area, you said. There was we, something we were already doing. Part of it. Part of yeah, it. that was just taking All a little right. more on. All right, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Roll call. Joe Kubal? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Brashe? Yes. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Tina Overland? Yes. Mark Sapiti? Yes. Nate Elbert? Yes. Motion carries ordinance 1923. And then the next uh, uh, the next would be a resol the resolution approving the grant of the well site easement. So moved is presented. Second. We have a motion by all the person Overland, seconded by Alderman Jefferson. For resolution yes. accepting and approving a grant of well site easement um, on the Menard property, behind the Menard's property for installation of well 14. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Brashay? Yes. Burrell Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Tina Overland? Yes. Mark Sapiti? Yes. Nate Albert? Yes. Joe Kubo? Yes. Motion carries resolution 1156. That's all I have this evening. I did just want to make one quick comment. Uh, I know there were some questions and concerns uh, about the uh, the manholes 
on in some of the areas where we're doing some paving. Um, they currently have another municipality's name on them. Those are just temporary until ours are come in from the foundry. Um, all of our manholes in the city of Crest Hill say city of Crest Hill, either water, storm, or sewer. Um, and right now, just with the backlog at the foundry, in order to keep this project moving, they had some, uh, the contractor had some in their, in their storage yard. They just used ones that were available until ours come in. Um, as soon as ours come from the foundry, they'll get changed out and they will say City of Crest Hill. Um, and, and hopefully that's sooner rather than later. But it, it's, oh, that's just how that normally works. And whatever they have in, the, in their yard, they will put uh, in for temporary. Well, the amusing pastime of people. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay, any questions of Public Works? Yeah, have one more announcement. Oh, um, yes, uh, sorry. Uh, this, uh, I'd like to announce on December 4th, uh, this was in the council packet this last week, on December 4th, the Christmas parade uh, is coming back for the third third year. Um, obviously, a lot more information will come out the, the sooner we get with the route, the times, but it will be 10 a.m. December 4th. Uh, we'll be doing the same, the same uh, type of parade through the entire city like we have in past years with uh, the police department, public works, and the fire department. So I'd be, I'll be happy to entertain any questions. Sorry. Could you check, have your voice checked on the corner of uh, Gaylord and Theodore Street, the whole intersection, there's a lot of holes around there, especially around our manhole cover too, it's a big hole. Yep, well, we can get on pothole patching this week, or not this week, early next week. But we'll, if there's anything right, critical right away, we'll throw some patch in it. No problem. Okay, okay thanks, Mark. Um, moving on, city engineer, Ron's on vacation. Um, he has no report, I Mark took care of that actually. Um, community, community Economic Development Director, Tony Butzikowski. Good evening, Tony. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, nothing on the agenda, but I just wanted to pro provide a couple quick updates. Um, next week at Plan Commission, four items. One of them was the text amendment that you referred uh, for the adult use recreational can cannabis. So we'll have that public hearing next Wednesday. In addition, public hearing on the update to the 2014 comprehensive plan, the sub-area plan in the area of Chernovic, Ladis, and Enterprise, just south of Amazon. Um, two petitions from private developers, um, Abe Katz from the Hillcrest Shopping Center will have his PUD proposal on that public hearing as well for the Armed Services Recruitment Center and a separate outlot they'll be moving out of the inline in center and then the addition for that Smoothie King proposal that'll be located in the same building as Stella's, but just south with the drive-through. Uh, the last item for next um, Wednesday is the INDEC proposal. I, I think you saw it maybe a couple months ago. It was uh, an industrial subdivision proposal just south of Amazon, uh, speculative warehouse um, office building and that PUD is before the plan commission for public hearing next Wednesday. It's approximately, I think, 500,000 square foot speculative warehouse building. Um, and final item, I just wanted to recognize um, White Smoke and Ash for their grand opening last week. Uh, ribbon cutting was last Thursday. I don't think I've ever been to one that was so well attended. Um, and congratulate Don and Passion White for that opening. I hope they're very successful. Thank you. Any questions of economic and community development? Okay, thanks, Tony. Um, moving on to our police department, our police chief, Ed Clark. Good evening, Ed. Evening, Mayor and Council. The only item I have on the agenda this evening is uh, an increase in the fireworks uh, fine for possession and or explosion of fireworks, to and including the loud noise uh, portion of that offense. Uh, moving that, uh, we, we discussed this uh, at work session, and I believe we came to an agreement of raising it to $250 fine. And uh, the other thing was that uh, the police department will now, per directive, uh, check the box to have it be a mandatory hearing for the administrative hearing. And actually, the fine is a range of 250 minimum. Minimum, right. Which is 750, which is the next. Correct. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Dyke, seconded by Alderwoman Gazal for the ordinance amending 
section 9.42.040 and 7.32-50 of the Code of Ordinances to increase the fine amount for fireworks possession and explosion, the minimum of $250 to $700, from a range of $250 to $750. Questions or comments? Just want to thank you, Chief, again for you know your input on this ordinance and creating for the uh, mandatory uh, attendance at a hearing because they inconvenience their neighbors, and I think that's a good way to inconvenience them for what they have done or have with the fireworks and disturbing elderly and animals and everything else that's you know in the neighborhood. The breed, the smoke, chance of fire. So thank you. Thank you. Roll call, please. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Mark Sapiti? Yes. Nate Albert? Yes. Joe Kubo? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Roche? Yes. Sherelle Jefferson? Yes. Body Gasol? Yes. Motion carries to Ordinance 1924. I do not have any other items on the agenda. Your two week informational packet was uh, presented to you for uh, email, and I'll entertain any questions. Questions of the police chief? Okay, thanks, Ed. Thank you. Uh, moving on to the mayor's report, we did handle uh, the first two agenda items already. So the next agenda item is the approval of the appointment of Mr. John Smith to the Police Pension Board. You have a copy of his application and his resume in your packet. He was at our August 22nd, 2022 work session uh, for a meet and a meet and greet from the city council. He has 30, he's retired from the Chicago Police Department living in Caroline Lakes with 35 years of experience um, with the Chicago Police Department. Um, I would recommend his approval for um, appointment with his term to expire on April 30th, 2024. So moved, Mayor. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Albert, seconded by Alderman Kubal for the appointment of Mr. John Smith. Effective immediately to the Crest Hill Police Pension Board with the term to expire April 30th, 2024. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. John Fashe? Yes. Darrell Jefferson? No. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Mark Sapiti? Yes. Nate Albert? Yes. Joe Kubo? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. Motion carries, thank you. Okay, I will contact him tomorrow on his appointment. Uh, next uh, on the agenda is the reconsideration of amended ordinance number 1918. There is information in your packet. Uh, just for some background information, the City Council did pass uh, the amended ordinance 1918 at our August 1st, 2022 City Council meeting. Um, I brought it before uh, City Council at the August 15th. Um, meeting uh, for reconsideration and um, for, veto. Or for to veto, correct, to veto. So you have before you this evening, I would hope for your uh, consideration in the reconsideration, eh, reconsideration of amended ordinance 1918, which would veto ordinance 1918. City Attorney, I'm going to ask you very clearly and concisely, in order to once again pass what we passed, how do we make the motion? Somebody would make a motion to override the veto of amended ordinance 1918. And then we would need a second and a roll call vote. I make and a it, motion to- And it would need to pass by two thirds majority. I make a motion to override the veto of ordinance 1918. Second. second. I'm sorry. Okay, we have motion by Alder Person Overland, seconded I heard Alderwoman Pazal. So a yes, just to be clear, a yes to over a yes, the veto a yes is, vote. is retaining the first vote that was taken. Yes. Okay, just. A yes vote is to override the veto which would make the amended ordinance 1918 now the official uh, law of the uh, city. Okay, the motion is to override the mayor's veto. Questions or comments? 
Uh, Mayor, I have a couple of comments. Uh, it's just a repeat of what I said on the meeting on August 1st. Um, I just feel like this is a step backwards by having our finance director report to the city treasurer as opposed to our full-time city administrator that has the education and the experience to run an organization like our city <clears throat> and giving uh, the part-time elected official the authority to have people report to him or her is just uh, regressive instead of progressive. So I will stand by my vote, which will be a no for this. Thank you. Uh, and, um, Mike, I'm sorry, uh, city attorney. I've kind of did a little research on this myself and talked about it with other municipalities and other state and government officials. Uh, the original vote was six to two. And in counties all over the state, six votes out of eight is considered veto proof. Uh, and I'm kind of questioning why we're we here visiting this issue today if we had the majority at that time, and you need two vote, two descendant votes to just get to a tiebreaker. As we discussed at the work session, my understanding of the, my interpretation of the municipal code is that any ordinance can be vetoed by the mayor, as we discussed in that work session. Um, it doesn't mean that you can't override the veto, but it doesn't automatically make it veto proof, in my opinion. Thank you. Anybody else? I just hope this will put the end to all this um, veto and will stop uh, wasting and using city attorney and wasting taxpayer money. So I hope this will put um, a stop to it. And um, there was a reason why this board was elected and there's a reason why there is eight elected officials and to quote you again, Mayor, as I said at the last meeting, the majority rules. And I hope respectfully that we don't start this as um, a habit of vetoing everything because things don't go a certain way to benefit certain people. And let me comment that the mayor was elected by the people also for many years to sit in this chair. And I'm looking at their interest also. Mm -hmm. And I have the authority under state statute to veto. This is the first time I have made a veto in my 14 years sitting at this table, but I do not believe that this ordinance is in the best interest of the city of Crest Hill. And we are going backwards instead of going forward. I that don't disagree. Said, I, I was done. Ask for a I was a dance mayor when I kind of cut me off, but I don't disagree that you have that right, but not because you can, you should. There's a, re there's a difference between what I can do and what I should do. Um, I don't think we're going backwards. Uh, and I'm not gonna sit here and go over and over about what we stated in every meeting. If information it's, uh, it was given, we will not be where we at today. That's number one. Number two, this is for clarification. Many people are confused. This is not something new. This ordinance was in place back in the day. This is the way it is, just like the way you are a part-time mayor. So I have concerns at this point that you are a part mayor and you're running the city. We're not arguing that. If we're going to sit and argue that, every elected official here, there's an issue because we're all part-timers. And we have a big commitment. And some of us work overtime. And I think the treasurer have proven how much work and effort he has put into his position just like the way you have. And I will be the biggest liar here sitting here. I will not say you sit and you work and you have dedicated it many times. You know, and that goes to future uh, councilmen that they're considering running for mayor in the future, near future, I should say, and we all know who. Um, I will watch what I say because if you want to be elected as a mayor, then you need to back up your words, just saying. Roll Mr. Call, Treasurer, please, do you have any comments? 
None. None. Roll call, Chris. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Mark Sapiti? Yes. Nate Elbert? No. Joe Kubal? No. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Roche? Yes. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Motion carries. Ordinance 1918 stays. Okay. With that being said, I have no other agenda items. Uh, I do want to comment that uh, myself, City Administrator Jim Marino, and Tony Budzikowski, our Economic Development Director, was at White Smoke and Ash last uh, Thursday, September 1st, for grand opening. I will say, in my past 14 years, I've been to a lot of ribbon cuttings, grand openings. That was one of the largest crowds I've ever seen. I think they were in excess of 75 individuals that were at that grand opening. Um, what Mr. Mr. White and his wife Passion um, did to the inside of that building is incredible of what it used to look like to how they had made it. And I am certainly not a cigar smoker, but the people that were there told me that this is one of the nicest cigar bars and lounges that they've ever been at. So um, if, if, our, if that is one of your hobbies with the cigars, I would suggest that you visit it. Um, I believe it will become a destination point for the city of Crest Hill. And we certainly want to welcome the Whites to the city of Crest Hill. Thank them for all the improvements that they made to the property um, and wish them much success for many years to come at that location. With that being said, the mayor will entertain any questions. Hearing none, we'll move on to our city clerk's report. Christopher Shea Hall, good evening, Chris. Good evening, thank you so much. Um, first I have this is a block party application, a resident on Laurel Oak is requesting it uh, for um, September 10th from 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. Also asking for the police and fire department to stop by. Council, your decision. Uh, I make a motion that we approve the application for the block party. I'll second that. Motion by Alderman Jefferson, seconded by Alderwoman Gazal for the approval of the block party um, for Laura to close off Laurel Oak Drive from Laurel Oak Court. Questions or comments, this will be for September 10th, 2022 from 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. Questions or comments? Um, Chief, are you good? They do it every year. You're good with the, the way they're closing the streets, right? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Roll call. Mark Sapiti? Yes. Nate Albert? Yes. Joe Kubal? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Brashay? Yes. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Gazal? Yes. And Tina Oberlin? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you so much. And we'll let the proper departments know. The second I have is another block party for Lock Lane uh, for September 24th from 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. Council, your decision. So moved, Mayor. Second. We have motion by Alderman Albert, seconded by Alderperson Oberlin for the approval of the block party on Lock Lane. Questions or comments? This will be for, what's the date? September 24th. September 24th. Questions or comments? Roll call. Joe Kubal? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Brashay? Yes. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Mark Sapiti? Yes. Nate Albert? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you so much, and we'll let the proper departments know. And yes, they are asking for police uh, and fire also that day. And that's all I have to report tonight. Pat, I see you're here. Any comments on the black party you'd like to make? Uh, you're no? all invited, and thank you very much. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> I was just going to ask that, Pat. <laughs> yes. It's my son's birthday. Can I bring him? Of course. Okay, thank you. Any questions for city clerk? All right, thanks, Chris. Mm -hmm. Uh, moving on to our treasurer's report, our treasurer, Glenn Conklin. Good evening, Glenn. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'd like to report regular and overtime payroll from August 1st, 2022 through August 14th of 2022 in the amount of $251,276.37. Also, I'd like to report the regular and overtime payroll from August 15th, 2022 to August 28, 2022, in the amount of 
$735.46. Uh, next on the uh, agenda for me, and I'm going to have Lisa handle this one, is on item number 16, which is an uh, ordinance supplementing appropriation. So this would be, as discussed, So moved as presented. Second. Motion by Alder Person Overland, seconded by Alderman Albert to approve an ordinance supplementing the appropriation ordinance for the fiscal year beginning May 1st, 2022 and ending April 30th, 2023 for the appropriation ordinance for an accounts disbursement clerk. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Gasol? Yes. Ken Overland? Yes. Mark Sapiti? Yes. Nate Albert? Yes. Joe Kubal? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Brashe? Yes. Motion carries ordinance 1925. Next we have, uh, and I may have Lisa handle this one as well, uh, uh, on your recommendation to hire an accounts disbursement clerk. as discussed at the August 22nd work session for an additional accounts disbursement clerk to the treasurer's office. So moved, Mayor. Second. second. Motion by Alderman Albert, seconded by Alderperson Overland for the approval of hiring an additional accounts disbursement clerk in the treasurer's office. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mark Sapiti? Yes. Nate Albert? Yes. Joe Kuwa? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Brashe? Yes. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Gazal? Yes. And Tina Overland. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. I want to thank you all. The last action item I have for you tonight is uh, I seek your approval on a list of bills from August 1st of 2022 through September 7th of 2022. The total on that is $828,725.08. pennies. So moved as presented. Second. Motion by Alderperson Overland, seconded by Alderman Jefferson for the approval of the list of bills. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Nate Albert? Yes. Joe Kubal? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Brashe? Yes. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Tina Overland? Yes. And Mark Sapiti? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. I want to thank you all tonight, and I'd uh, entertain any questions. Well, I just want to thank both of you for all your hard work on all of this. I, I, I for one, appreciate it. Appreciate your cooperation and your diligence and um, the fact that you found that money, then the PP money to uh, pay for the uh, new hire. So uh, keep doing what you're doing, Lisa. Great job. Thank you. You too, Glenn. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, Glenn. Uh, unfinished business. We have nothing on the agenda. Anyone? New business? Committee liaison reports. Anybody? City Council comments, positive City Council comments, anything you'd like to share with your constituents? We'll begin with Ward 4 this evening, Alderman Kubal. Uh, nothing at this time, uh, Mayor. Alderman Albert? No, just on behalf of the Crest Alliance Club, I'd like to thank everybody that came out to the uh, annual luau. Uh, the luau uh, temperatures weren't quite there this year. It was a little chilly, uh, but we still had uh, good, good music and good crowds, so we appreciate all the support. Thank you. Alderman Spitty? Nothing at this time here. Okay. Alder Person Overland? I just want to give my deepest sympathies to the family mm -hmm. of Betty Pavlich and her passing. Um, may she rest in peace and be an angel in heaven. Alder Woman Gazal? Congratulations again to um, the Kowalski family, to um, Jordan. Great job. And my condolences to the Pavlich family. <coughs> Alderman Jefferson. Uh, just wanted uh, the residents that have been calling me and uh, giving me a lot of uh, different advice and stuff. I, I thank you for your input, and uh, I'll continue to grow and utilize that advice uh, that I've been getting. Uh, and uh, I'd like to just say happy birthday to our city treasurer. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Alderman Brashay. <laughs> Happy birthday. Don't do it. 
Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Okay. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> mm. Good night. Uh, I had nothing to report or to, you know, add, but happy birthday, Glenn. Okay, public comment. We have Mr. Theo Bellos on the agenda. Theo, to the podium, please. Uh, your address is optional. That's okay. Theodore C. Bellos, 1941 Connie Drive. First of all, I want to say hi to Lori. She's been patient with me going to the City Hall. I want to say thank you for her. Uh, Honorable Mayor, City Council, I'm not upset, I'm not angry, but I'm very disappointed. This is my third time in court right now fighting this ticket, parking ticket. First time I went there, the judge wanted to if I'm guilty or not, I said, I'm not guilty. The city attorney, she wouldn't drop it. And so I had to go back to file if I'm going to jury or bench trial. I said a bench trial. Okay, so I had to go back because for some reason, the law firm couldn't make it on that date. So I would think they would send me a note, a certified letter telling me they're changing the court date. Because you just don't notify somebody 24 hours. If you notice, I passed out, for some reason, I was going crazy the day when I talked to the judge, and he was kind of disappointed. I, I got a new judge, and he was kind of upset, saying, why are you in my court? This is for reckless driving, and, and uh, speeding ticket. This is a parking ticket. It should have been handled at your city hall. As the attorney should have said that night when I was here, he should have mentioned that it didn't belong downtown. It belongs here. So here's where I'm at. So if I didn't receive, that was in the mail. So I was going crazy. Who put this in my mailbox? So I went to the city hall, downtown Joliet, they says, we don't do things like that. If we want to mail things, it's certified mail to make sure that you received it. I went to the city here, and they says, we don't do that either. So, um, let me see. I didn't get much sleep last time because I'm taking care of my mom. She was up all night long. But um, So I contacted the uh, police officer, and very nice gentleman. He explained it to me. It was... Um, Officer Ivan, if I'm pronouncing the name, yeah. I V O N. Yeah. yeah, and I talked to Officer Brown, and they said that. Oh, then I went to his firm, and they said we don't do that either. Well, somebody put it in my mailbox, so uh, the officer got notice from probably his law firm to put it in my mailbox. And if I didn't look at it, and if I didn't go to court. Then they, the judge said that if they didn't make the court, they would issue a warrant out for my wife and me, a warrant for our arrest. I'm like, come on, it's a parking ticket. Well, so Officer Ivan says, you know, they won't drop it. And he did admit that, that we do have a problem in the city of Crest Hill with the two inches because some side gets two inches, some side don't get no snow at all. So he did say there was a problem there. Um, I suggest wanting to do what Chicago does, and it, it, there's no argument. No parking on the street from December 1st to April 1st. And there's no discussion, no argument if there was snow or not snow. But, but now I have to go back to court November 9th. It's going to be a year. And you have the authority, your, um, your mayor, to drop it because it's the city of Crest Hill versus me and my wife. It's not the county. It's not the state. That's why it should be settled here, the judge said. He was a little bit angry, you know. And I did apologize. It must have fell through the crack. But the city attorney should have told you that night that it belonged here. I know, Judge, you, uh, Your Honor, you told me that. Good luck. Fight it that night. <laughs> and that's your own words. And again, you know, I've been in this town for 30 years, never been arrested. Me and my wife are first responders. We always help the police department out when there's an accident, have no problem. The police department in this town has been great. I, I can't say anything more about them, you know. But again, I got to go again November 9th. It's only going to be a year. 
And I don't know why his law firm, the young lady, she was a little bit snippy with me, and she won't drop it. And I said, you got to be kidding. It's a parking ticket. And again, I told her, I did my homework. I called the Weather Bureau of this region. I didn't know it was in um, um, Naperville. It's in uh, Romeoville. I thought it would be down, downstate. He says, you guys don't have a weather watcher. I talked to Mark on the phone when I first got the ticket. And he says, well, I put the ruler in the ground. Well, you don't do it that way. You have to have a regular weather board. You can't measure snow on the ground with a ruler. It's a, you know, it's a process you have to go through. Again, if I was wrong, I was wrong. And if I'm right, I gotta, I gotta defend my right, you know? And it's not about the money, now it's about principle. So you have the authority to dismiss it, Your Honor, Honorable Mayor. I don't know if you will. You want me to go through with this? I have to subpoena the officer now. I have to. It's a lot of work. And I want to hear a comment from the city attorney. I, I will say this, Theo, that uh, I've never walked into the police chief's office. I've never called the attorneys to clear a ticket. I've always relied on whatever, whatever judgment the hear administrative hearing officer or the judge made. And okay. I will not do that in this case either. Okay. I will also say to you that you said you are in the middle of litigation yeah. with Will County Court. No, 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 no. No, the city of, no, I got it right here. No, the county is not taking me to court. Joliet's not taking me to court. The state's not taking you're going It's the city of you're, Crest Hill. You're going it should downtown. not be in Crest Hill. It should have been here, and he should have told you that. He's the attorney. He knows the law better than I do, and I had to look it up. It belongs here. You're not listening to me. And the judge was very disturbed with this. He said, why are Here's you in I'm my court? I'm going to suggest to you, Theo, okay, because you are going downtown to see the judge. We are in the middle of litigation. This is not the time and the place on television at this meeting to discuss litigation. You can certainly say whatever you wish. We are not going to get back and forth at this table with negotiations and while you're in litigation. If you it's want to stick around after the meeting, you can certainly speak with our police chief. If our city attorney wants to speak with you, he certainly can do that also. With that being said, I'm, I'm going to say that, are you finished now? What? But it's in black and white. The city's taking me to court. It's, it's not. And you're telling me go back to. And the judge is going to tell me. You have Why a court are you in my date? Court? You said you had a court date November. set on November. Yeah. That is what you need to honor. And whatever that judge rules, he we will honor it. He told me to come it. here, though. Take it up here. Okay. If you want to speak with the attor attorney and or the yeah. city uh, uh, police chief the attorney after and the meeting, you're certainly more than welcome. Okay. okay. Thank you. Anybody else wish to address city council? Please step to the podium, state your name for the record. Your address is optional. Okay. Uh, to our city attorney, Mike, is there a need for an executive session? There is not. Motion to adjourn, Mayor. Second. Second. We have a motion for an adjournment by Alderman Dyke, seconded by Alderman Jefferson. Roll call, please. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Mark Cipede? Yes. Nate Elbert? Yes. Joe Kubal? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Roche? Yes. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Our meeting is adjourned at 8.04 p.m. I thank you and good evening.